Hey everyone, how's it going? For today's video, let's take an up close and personal exclusive in-depth look at the all new BMW i8. And this is going to be a detailed in-depth review of the i8. We'll start it up, talk about the unique powertrains and take it on a test drive. Not to mention highlight various trim levels, how it's made much more with a thorough look at both the interior and exterior features. And before I begin, I'd like to take a moment to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Flow BMW located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina for providing the i8 featured in today's in-depth review. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. The i8 was designed with dihedral doors, which hinge up at the A-pillars for an up and out motion when opening, allowing easier entry into both the main cabin and rear seats, especially in tighter areas since the doors are quite long. They're constructed with a carbon fiber reinforced plastic inner structure with an aluminum outer skin, making them 50% lighter than conventional doors. The featherweight design and great strut support mean you have to exert little to no effort to open or close. The exterior is finished in crystal white pearl metallic with contrasting frozen gray accents. Frozen blue accents are available. Paired with the Terra World exclusive Dalbergia brown leather interior and cloth accents, blue seat belts and accent stitching. We'll talk about the four various trim levels or worlds later in the video. The i8 features standard push button ignition, so to power it up, you simply make sure the key fob was within the interior of the vehicle, then hold the brake and hit the console mount a button to go. When you climb in, the LED light ring around the button softly pulsates red. Once you press the brake, it pulsates brighter. Power on the car and it changes the color from red to blue. The i8 features a speed proportional electric assisted rack and pinion steering system. It's routed through a sporty three spoke bespoke steering wheel with split spoke design at the bottom. Like any BMW product, the detailing is quite good, featuring supple leather, thick bolsters up top, and blue accenting that highlights the circumference of the wheel. The upper satin silver spokes house all of your multifunction controls, while the BMW badging on the airbag cover and exterior panels are highlighted by blue trim rings, a similar theme also seen with the new i3 electric car. The wheel feels nice to the touch without being too thick and gives a nice view of the instrument cluster. On the road, the i8 is a pleasure to drive. The steering feels nicely weighted, the chassis is firm without being punishing, and it evokes a comfortable driving profile with supportive seats and generous amount of space for the front occupants. The digital display up front takes a bit to get used to, but most of your vital data is in big font or circular dials so you can easily keep an eye on it. A heads up display on the windshield also projects your speed. While the i8 isn't meant to be a hardcore track star, for its intended purpose it delivers a great balance of fun and economy with a serene cabin to keep out unwanted noise. Speaking of noise, the engine note outback is actually enhanced through the audio speakers. It's becoming a more common practice this day and age, especially when you think about how much sound deadening is in new cars. I personally think it just sounds more pronounced than artificial, giving off a fantastic soundtrack while accelerating. The 
I-8 was designed from the onset as a plug-in hybrid, deriving its power from a combination of gas and electric sources. Its drivetrain is unique as power is delivered to the pavement by two separate transmissions. Their levels of engagement depend on your driving mode and whether you're in full EV mode or a combination of gas and electricity. A GKN two-speed automatic gearbox propels the front wheels when using power from the electric motor, while an ISIN six-speed automatic delivers power from the turbocharged three-cylinder to the rear wheels, essentially creating a vehicle with inherent all-wheel drive. It's all routed through a familiar BMW electronic gear selector with manual shiftability either via the selector below or the paddle shifters. While under gasoline power, the 6-speed automatic performs fantastically with quick upshifts and a little bit of a throttle blip, not to mention rev matching downshifts. Now when you're on full electric power, the only thing you can hear is just a subtle whir from the electric powertrain. Unless you're in full electric mode or sport mode, the vehicle will oscillate between combination gasoline electric and full electric power depending on how much acceleration or the driving scenario. Like the gear changes with the two-speed automatic up front, it's completely seamless. One of the first things you'll notice is the digital instrument cluster that displays essential information such as speed, drive mode, vehicle data, and other safety systems like adaptive cruise. Placing the car in a sport mode brings up a traditional circular gauge cluster for speed and RPM readouts, while comfort mode, the power display meter replaces the rev counter. EcoPro adds an efficiency display, allowing drivers to maximize distance by monitoring their accelerator pedal. Each mode is highlighted by unique colors. You can alter the i8's driving behaviors via five driving modes, Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro, with the latter two allowing the ability for full EV driving or electric vehicle. Putting the i8 into E-Drive or full electric mode allows it to travel up to 22 miles before the gas engine automatically kicks in. It can also accelerate to 60 miles an hour in about 9.5 seconds with a top speed limit to just 75 miles an hour while in electric mode. The electric motor's two-speed transmission uses first gear for EV driving and shifts to the taller second gear for mixed power and traveling above 75 miles an hour. Comfort is the default setting which gives the drivers a good balance between sport and efficiency. Eco Pro enhances electric range by reducing electric loads on non-essential components such as AC modulation. To activate sport mode, simply click the gear selector to the left while in drive. The gauges illuminate red and the engine ignites out back with full power from both the gas and electric powertrains. Once you place the vehicle in reverse, your backup camera automatically appears, a nice high-res display. You can also bring up a top-down view with the 360-degree camera system, it also works in sync with your front and rear parking sensors. Adjustable guidance lines, obstacle marking, all in an effort to help aid in parking. So before we cover some background, let's go ahead and flip on the automatic LED headlamps as well as the hazards. Both windows are fully automatic as standard while your electronic door actuator is located on top of the door handle, automatically flips up with ease. Unless the car is idling under gas power, while in electric mode, if you open up the door and let your foot off the brake, the car automatically goes into its accessory power mode, similar to the i3. BMW claims the i8 represents the sports car of the future, but what does that really mean? With the new eco-minded i sub-brand, the i8 represents the brand's first plug-in hybrid, joining the recently launched i3 electric vehicle. BMW dove into the hybrid segment a number of years ago, but with this new 2 Plus 2 they've created something different, something much more special. A sports car designed around economy and sustainability, utilizing advanced build techniques and delivering an impressive level of performance. While the i3 and i8 differ quite a bit in their automotive missions, their common bond lies in a revolutionary design process that, for the most part, combines carbon fiber, aluminum, and other lightweight materials such as magnesium. The overall architecture is known as Life Drive, and consists of a separate passenger compartment and chassis, which are joined together to create the vinyl vehicle. The aluminum drive module carries the gas and electric powertrains, which are both cradled by aluminum subframes. It also contains the battery pack, electronics, chassis and suspension components, and crash structures. On the other hand, the life module consists of a carbon fiber reinforced plastic passenger cell that sits on top of the drive module. The benefit? 
Carbon fiber is both 50% and 30% lighter than steel and aluminum respectively, with superior torsional rigidity and overall safety for occupants. Thanks to BMW's newly developed carbon manufacturing process, it's also cheaper to make than the typical woven pattern, but it doesn't have as pretty of a finish which is why you won't see any exterior panels left in exposed carbon. The body is cloaked in a combination of aluminum and composite panels. With a curb weight just under 3,300 pounds, it's also pretty lean. BMW stopped at nothing to help shed weight wherever possible such as acoustically benefiting foam plastic climate control ducting. Aluminum electrical wiring replaces traditional copper wires, while aluminum bolts and screws replace traditional steel. Not only that, the small window behind the rear seat is chemically treated, a process known as Gorilla Glass. It allows it to be thinner at just 0.7 millimeters thick and lighter, while being more durable than conventional laminated glass. Like the i3, designers and engineers weren't bound to develop a car using existing steel bodies and chassis. Everything was designed from scratch to create something different and innovative, all in the name of efficiency. The i8 is one of those rare cars that look even better in production than the initial concepts. It's larger than you would expect and boasts sculpted body panels that can only be described as a work of art. BMW describes the style as layered, in which surfaces and lines overlap and interweave. The sports car proportions are all there, a sleek profile with wide stands, low roof lines, sloping nose, short overhangs, and a wedge shape out back. Everything you see was designed for aerodynamics, with large intakes up front that help reduce drag over the front wheels. The V-shaped black belt is a BMW i trademark. With the i8, it starts at the hood, which carries a radiator vent that shoots the air over the roof and through the unique sail panels over the rear flanks. Defined intake scoops across the sides within the widened rear fenders, in addition to a couple intakes underneath, send cool air to the gas engine and various components out back. All in all, coefficient of drag is a slippery .26. The heart of the i8 consists of a pair of transverse motors. A mid-matted, turbocharged 1.5-liter three-cylinder lies out back and delivers power to the rear wheels via a six-speed automatic, while the front-mounted AC permanent Magnus synchronous electric motor delivers power to the front wheels through the previously mentioned two-speed automatic. The three-cylinder, also shared with the redesigned entry-level Mini Cooper, benefits from all aluminum construction, double overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, dual variable valve timing with variable intake valve lift, and direct injection. The i8's engine is only accessible by service techs, but you can get a pretty good idea of what it looks like in the Mini. It has a compression ratio of 9.5 to 1 and features a red line of 6,500 RPM. The three-cylinder develops significantly more power in the i8, 228 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 236 pound-feet of torque at 3,700 RPM, thanks to a single twin-scroll turbocharger pumping out 22 PSI of boost. 91-octane fuel is recommended with an 89-octane minimum. An accessory 280-volt electric motor connects to the engine by a belt drive and develops a modest 20 horsepower and 74 pound-feet of torque. While not officially labeled in the performance specs, this motor basically functions as a generator to help keep the battery charged in sport mode. In addition, it also has the ability to provide short bursts of torque to augment the gas engine before boost kicks in, helping balance the power and traction with the instant electric power. The primary electric motor up front develops 129 horsepower or 96 kilowatts and 184 pound-feet of torque for a combined system horsepower and torque rating of 357 and 420 pound-feet respectively. This translates to a 0 to 60 time around 4 seconds with quarter mile times around 12.9 seconds at 112 miles an hour. Top speed is limited to 155 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, the EPA rates the i8 at 76 miles to a gallon equivalent. When using a combination of gas and electricity, there's an 11.1 gallon fuel tank located under the passenger seat with a fuel filler located just aft of the passenger door. So what about the battery pack? In order to ensure optimal driving range and longevity, a significant portion of the car's design went around the battery pack to make sure it was of proper size without negatively impacting interior space. The aluminum container measures 57.5 inches long, 14.2 inches high, and 13 inches wide, and contains 96 lithium-ion battery cells weighing 216 pounds in total. While the structure spans lengthwise through the center of the car, it provides no added structural stiffness unlike the stressed member of the Tesla Model S. Therefore, the high door sills and subsequent aluminum bracing were designed for added torsional rigidity. 
Its positioning not only aids towards perfect weight distribution, but a center of gravity under 18 inches, which is lower than any current BMW model. To aid ingress and egress with a high threshold and low roofline, elongated doors were employed that makes climbing in less of a challenge. The dihedral doors not only make a dramatic visual statement, but allow the large doors to open easier in tight parking spaces. The 355 volt lithium ion battery pack has a rated total capacity of 7.1 kilowatt hours and usable capacity of 5.2 kilowatt hours. With the standard 120 volt household outlet, the battery can be fully charged in three and a half hours, but with BMW's 220 volt charging station, time is significantly reduced to just one and a half hours. When operating in the car's default comfort mode, the battery is allowed to drop to 20% capacity before the engine kicks in to help maintain charge. This reserve keeps enough juice flowing to maintain EV mode when stopping and initial acceleration. Since both motors are used in sport mode, battery capacity is maintained at 80% for maximum performance. The i8 can be had with two available wheel and tire packages. The standard set consists of W-spoke aluminum wheels with low resistance tires, measuring 20 by 7 inches in front and 20 by 7.5 inches in the rear, with 195.50 tires in front and 215.45 tires in the rear. The optional set as seen here include wider forged aluminum turbine wheels, 20 by 7.5 inches in front and 20 by 8.5 inches in the rear wrapped in 215-45 tires and 245-40 tires respectively. These are tested to hold upwards of 0.93 g of cornering forces. As far as the brakes, the i8 carries four-wheel ventilated cross-drilled discs measuring 13.4 by 1.1 inches in front with four piston fixed calipers and 13 by 0.8 inches in the rear with single piston sliding calipers. With this setup, the i8 stops from 60 miles an hour and about 108 feet. Underneath, support is provided by a fully independent aluminum intensive suspension with double wishbones and lightweight hollow stabilizer bar up front and a multi-link rear design with stabilizer bar. Not to mention the i8 also features two stage adaptive dampers. Overall length is 184.9 inches with a width of 76.5 inches and a height of 50.8 inches right on a 110.2 inch wheelbase. Total unladen curb weight is around 3,285 pounds with a perfect weight distribution between the front and rear axles. As unconventional as the exterior is, the interior mirrors that distinct concept car flavor, carrying over BMW's layering design principles to create a cockpit that's low and focused in the driver. Build quality is excellent as you would expect with soft touch premium materials everywhere you look and tons of technology. All in all, there are four main trim levels, which BMW describes as worlds. You have the base Mega World, $2,000 Giga World, $3,000 Terra World like we have here, and the top tier limited edition $10,800 Pure Impulse World. Each package comes bundled with an abundance of features with unique accents and premium materials between them. The common theme are the sustainable materials and green build techniques. The leather surfaces on the seats and instrument panel are treated using olive leaf extract, giving them a more natural, high-quality look and feel, while various textile surfaces used on the seats, door trim, headliner, and more are made from a combination of recycled plastic bottles and 40% virgin wool. Even the key fob blade is made from a biopolymer based on castor beans. The oil from the beans is mixed with a 30% glass fiber combination to make the sturdy plastic-like material. I was actually surprised by how much room there is for the front two occupants with a generous amount of seat travel. If you're around 6 feet or just a little bit over, you should have no problem sitting in the vehicle. While the dash carries a pretty familiar modern BMW design language, it's very bespoke and futuristic looking, unlike anything else in the current BMW fleet. There's also customizable ambient LED illumination found throughout the interior. Climbing into the back seat may pose a little bit of a challenge for taller individuals. To gain access, it's pretty self-explanatory. Reach behind the headrest, grab the handle, and flip the seat forward. But the first thing that you'll notice is the i8 really lives up to its true 2 plus 2 design. There's not a whole lot of space back there, only for some smaller individuals. Adults would be pretty cramped if they were actually to sit back there, but that depends on the legroom of the front passengers. The seats do carry a familiar design language overall to keeping everything nice and tied together, and you have some of the rear speakers mounted up in the C-pillar. 
but to make a little bit of extra use for people who can't sit back there, if you're just going to be riding up front, is the custom fitted Louis Vuitton luggage kit that you can also order. It's a four piece set constructed entirely out of carbon fiber to kind of match the overall theme of the vehicle, and it stacks nicely within the seats and the rear cargo area. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. And we'll go ahead and shut her up. The i8 features a standard 11 speaker premium Harman Kardon surround sound system, all routed through the newest generation iDrive mobile media navigation telemetrics interface with a high res 8.8 .8 inch LCD display. It's all routed through a controller setup in the middle here, and compared to other systems on the market, it's one of the easier systems to comprehend in the premium segment. You just click the wheel left, right, up, and down, push down to select an option, and you have shortcut keys all the way around with a rotary function in the dial, not to mention an integrated touchpad feature. A. M. Side curtain airbags, hands-free Bluetooth microphones located on either side so the passengers can be heard equally, in addition to a padded visor. Auto dimming rear view mirror with three position garage home link located beneath. And in the top stack you have your SOS emergency roadside assistance, LED reading lamps, and interior illumination. Beautiful detail in the leather wrapping in the dash with double accent blue stitching all the way across including the speedometer pinnacle. Now let's go over a quick recap of the iDrive system beginning with the multimedia screen which we're currently utilizing at the moment. Now the i8 does not feature a CD player, this is a pretty common trend among new car makers, but does feature more smartphone connectivity, iPod, USB integration, hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio, as well as storing music on the music collection which is the vehicle's integrated hard drive. None to mention other auxiliary MP3 devices. Now, regardless of which menu that you're in, if you click the rotary wheel all the way over to the right, or simply hit the options tab in the center stack, you can bring up the split yield function of the display. It's highly customizable with different content from navigation to onboard info and gives you a little bit more substance, I guess, so you don't have to continuously go between different menus to get vital information. You also have Sirius XM Satellite Radio as standard, including HD radio. Your preset stations are located within the main radio screen, as are your audio adjustments. There's a whole lot of different adjustments from manual tuning to category search and more. In the main radio screen, it shows all of your available stations in your area, including HD stations as they're available. Back in the main menu, everything is nicely organized so you can easily see it while going down the road and it's not too complicated until you start diving into some of the features which take a little bit more concentration. We scroll down to telephone, that's the main screen for your hands-free Bluetooth feature. It'll automatically ask you to pair it if you don't have one already connected, otherwise you just select the device or the vehicle will automatically connect to the paired device. You can dial the number, store contacts, and voice dial through the voice recognition system. 
The navigation screen is a nice high res unit. You can also split yield the screen like I talked about earlier. And if you click the wheel to the left, it brings up some of your basic commands, points of interest, real time traffic updates, interactive map, and more. All the traffic updates show as different colored lines on the display. Click the wheel to the left once more and it brings up your destination input so you can put in addresses, points of interest, store addresses, and more. The office feature basically allows you to store contacts, messages, notes, basic, like basic office features. Connected Drive offers concierge services, message storage, internet access, roadside assistance, and customer relations for owners, not to mention putting in service requests and more. The Vehicle Info System is the all-encompassing everything you need to know about the vehicle from owner's manual to vehicle status, so tire pressure monitoring system, engine oil level, and different service requirements. It's pretty comprehensive overall, and has a nice display that's custom tailored for the i8. Like I said, the owner's manual is searched on the system. You can manually search or write in commands with the touchpad, which I'll show you in just a second. You can also search the owner's manual by pictures or different locations of the car, and quick reference, which are the main topics that most people probably need assistance with, and just quick recap. E-Drive is tied to the vehicle's electric vehicle and economy modes, so it'll show you Eco Pro, overall economy status, and energy flow through the vehicle from combustion to regenerative braking and electric power. And not to mention vehicle settings where you can customize departure time settings and charging. Scrolling down to Auto E-Drive, it'll show you the state of charge and how much range you have left. You can hold that state of charge so the vehicle will continuously hold, for example, 11 miles until you turn it off and will begin using the electric power once more. But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the iDrive system in the BMW i8. The illuminated button beneath the hazard switch activates your intelligent safety systems like frontal collision warning and pedestrian warning. You can turn them both on, turn them both off, or individually. As we continue down the center console, right beneath the center mounted aluminum air vent, you have some basic radio controls, rewind, seek, tune, fast forward by that button there, presets in the middle, and changing the different radio mode. Down beneath that is a standard dual zone electronic automatic climate control with three stage heated seats for both sides, fan speed in the middle, different zones, automatic recycling, and more. Like we touched on earlier, your different drive modes is off to the left hand side including your camera system, parking sensors, traction control, comfort eco mode, and your electric drive mode. The right hand side contains an electronic parking brake that you would pull up to activate and put your foot on the brake, push down to deactivate. This little cubby right here houses your iPod, auxiliary integration, USB input, and enough storage to set an iPhone. Maybe not the iPhone 6, but I got an iPhone 5 to fit. single cup holder up front, two in the rear, flip open the center console and you have a little bit of storage space, a 12 volt power outlet, and a phone clip-in adapter. As far as the steering wheel, on the left hand side you have your cruise control, and the right hand side houses your hands-free telephone, voice commands, and radio controls. Help. To obtain the voice commands of the display panel, say voice commands. To obtain general information on voice activation, say, help with voice activation. To obtain important short commands with example, your automatic rain sensing windshield wipers in the stalk to the right, and the left hand side houses your high beams, parking lights, turn signals, and the driver info controls that show up in that little display in the bottom of the speedometer cluster. Alrighty. Go ahead and power her down. And check out the rest of the vehicle. Like I briefly touched on earlier, there's not a whole lot of storage space in the i8. It's around 4.7 cubic feet, so when you open up the glass, even though it is a hatch, there's still a little bit of a tall loading height and just enough space in the back for some small pieces of luggage. But if you wanted to take it a step even further, you can opt for the fitted Louis Vuitton luggage set that'll fit behind the front seats. 
Back here, everything is carpeted with a fairly deep storage well and a cargo privacy cover. The engine is also located back here like we talked about earlier, only accessible by service techs. The Gorilla Glass separates this compartment from the passenger area. You can also see the exposed carbon fiber shell as you come around the threshold. The passenger seat also features the same power adjustments that you find in the driver's seat. Underneath, there's a locking glove box with a modest amount of space, LED lit, and lined in velour. The i8 is a radical departure for BMW and an excellent representation of futuristic style, technology, performance, and above all, efficiency. It's bound to be a future collectible and a glimpse at how far we've come in the automotive world, where it could be heading, and how we plan to achieve those goals. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all-new BMW i8. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.